Gender inequality is pervasive. And as for eons had an adverse effect on women and girls the world over, the long arm of this injustice have caused women to be systemically oppressed and suppressed, and their basic human rights violated at the hands of patriarchs, who is still controlling the social, economic, and political capital and power of the world. Since 1990, some strides have been made to level the playing field, but we have not achieved substantial gender equity yet. The slow progress in advancing women's rights and promoting a more gender equal society has been disgraceful, evidencing the lack of political and ethical will by all leaders at all levels to achieve meaningful change. To put things into context, at a global level, the 2018 World Economic Forum's Gender Gap Report indicated that it will take up to 108 years to achieve gender equality in health, education, economic opportunity, and political leadership. And the picture for Africa, as we know, is as dismal as what the global picture reveals. For Sub-Saharan Africa, it will take 135 years to close the gender gap. But not to fear, as our counterparts in the Middle East and North Africa never cease to disappoint us in this race of the best losers. For them, it will take a staggering 153 years to achieve gender equality. At this rate, we will not achieve UN SDG 5, achieving gender equality and empowering all women and girls by 2030. But we will hopefully reach the promised land in 21-27. Wow. These statistics at a macro level are indicative of a much deeper rot at societal level. To be more specific, currently only 23% of women are represented in political leadership. Only 5% of women are CEOs of Fortune 500 companies. And gender inequality is costing the economy in developing countries $9 trillion per year. So why is it important that we achieve gender equality, you ask? As Kofi Annan noted, Gender equality is more than a goal in itself. It is a precondition for meeting the challenge of reducing poverty, promoting sustainable development, and building good democratic governance. When it comes to democratic governance, equal access for men and women in decision-making is a prerequisite. It has been proven that women in decision-making positions constitutes a critical factor in ensuring that the policies that directly affect the, the lives of women and girls, as well as society in general, are positive. So what can we do to achieve gender equality? In 2017, I established the Women Lead Movement, a grassroots movement of women for, of diverse backgrounds in South Africa. I had the following strategic objectives in mind. Firstly, to establish the largest and most influential women-led grassroots movement in South Africa, as I have seen the immense power and impact of organized movements to drive global and national action on diverse issues. As an organized movement, we will be better able to articulate our interest and form a strong constituency to advance and influence laws and policies as a collective. We are currently apolitical but in time the movement will have the potential to compete in local and national elections. <laughs> producing its own political candidates, coupled with its own mass electoral support base, all made up of women. Secondly, to increase the representation and participation of women in public and political life, at a local government level in particular, as this will advance the uh, uh, achievement of human rights and accountability for women from the ground up. Lastly, to promote through education and advocacy a culture of respect and understanding of the Constitution and human rights, and to engender a more responsible, more active and participatory citizenry. The Women Lead Movement strategy is multi-tiered, as the complexity of the issue 
signals the complexity of the solution that will be required. We identify our communities across South Africa, and in those communities, we mobilize the women and girls to form part of the movement. We engage them on issues that are directly affecting them and the issues that is affecting the broader communities from where they come from. And together, we set out clear objectives of the social change that they want to see in their communities. We then add a little bit of flavor, which is the structure and the uh, strategy, by formalizing them into a woman-led community group. We educate and capacitate them on politics, human rights, democracy, governance, and leadership, <laughs> inter alia. And then we act as an informed collective. We believe that change starts in communities. And Eleanor Roosevelt echoed the sentiment when she said, where after all do human rights begin? It begins in small places, close to home, in the neighborhood where she lives, in the school and the college that she attends, in the factory, the farm, and the office where she works. Such are the places where every man, every woman, and every child seeks equal justice, equal opportunity, and equal dignity without discrimination. Unless these rights have meaning there, they will have little meaning anywhere else. Without concerted citizen action to uphold human rights close to home, we shall look in vain for progress in the larger world. I thank you.